If you're a recording artist and you want to become extremely consistent at finishing songs and releasing them, this video is gonna be for you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through an exact model of how you're gonna be able to fully finish your songs, be satisfied with how they sound, so that you can release music on a consistent basis. At the end of the day, if you wanna build a career out of music, whether that's releasing your own songs, producing music for other people, you need to be able to release music consistently, which means you need to finish music consistently. So first and foremost, if you're not fully producing your own music, what are you doing? Okay, I, I, I personally am a recording artist and I fully produce my own instrumentals, record the vocals at home, mix and master. And I've been doing that for some years now. I also teach recording artists how to do that through my Rapid Fire Music Academy. If you want more information about that, click the link in the description. You can go watch the main video pinned to my channel or you can go just book a call with me if you wanna apply. I've worked with 60 plus artists, been doing this for almost two years. That's not what we're here to talk about though. I'm here to give you a model and a framework that you can actually implement today. So make sure to stay to the end because everything we're gonna talk about in this video is extremely applicable and you can literally start doing this today. So there's really two parts to this video. The first part is how you can actually go about approaching your music. The second part of it is actually a tactical thing that you can do literally today. You can do both of these things today, but the first one is really a mindset and the second one is the tactical thing to do. So first of all, in terms of approaching your music and finishing it, one thing that I've noticed I used to do and a lot of my clients do is I've had clients ask me after they graduate from my academy, because here's the thing, I'll have clients start out only being able to write lyrics and they're at the point where they're like dude i'm stuck i can't even get songs done because i have to buy beats or work and wait with producers and wait for them to mix my songs and stuff like that so they're at the point where they, they don't have enough finished tracks then they graduate from my academy in 90 days and they're like they have a new problem which is i have too many songs that i'm working on at the same time too many incomplete projects so what do i do so first part of it is the mindset i actually have there's two polar opposite concepts you need to be aware of. The first one is really this. It's likely that 99% of the songs you start will never get released. I, I love that there's this thing called, uh, I think it's called Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule. I think of it more as like the 99-1 rule. 99% of the songs you start are never gonna be finished and released. And, and you have to come to terms with that. You need to come to terms with the fact that every time you sit down to create, doesn't mean you're gonna finish and release something. You need to come to, ter come to terms with the fact that when you sit down to make music, that doesn't mean that that song's going to get a million streams. That's cool. You need to fall in love more with the actual process and the inputs rather than the outcomes. That's critical that you burn that into your brain. On the flip, you also need to prioritize finishing songs, right? It's both. You don't wanna just have songs that are just sitting on your computer and that's it and you never put out music. So you kinda wanna set a cadence to how much you release music. I personally think that releasing a song every four to six weeks is really good or more. I have a couple clients, one of my clients, Jaden, he's doing a song every month, which is four weeks, and he's been keeping that up for about 10 months in a row. It's really good. I have another client, Carlos, who I wanna say is doing a song a month, but he's, he's, had, so he's had some months where he's done two songs in a month. So it kinda, it kinda depends. I'm personally good with putting out 10 to 12 songs, 10 to 14 songs per year. That's kinda my cadence, that works for me. You don't want it to be a tiny amount of songs, right? You, you don't wanna be like, okay, I'm gonna put out three great songs this year. Like three songs is not enough. Even be like, I'm gonna put out five great songs this year. Dude, five, like that's kinda not enough. Like you need to be consistent, you need to be putting out music. I'm not even gonna talk about why you need to do that, but like you know you need to do that. So it's kind of a little bit of both. That's why you need to fall in love with the input and the process of, I'm gonna sit down and make something. Because when you fall in love with that process of, I'm just gonna sit down and make something and fall in love with getting better and practicing and getting better and working on my skills, you're gonna end up making way better music because your mind's in a better place. So the first part of this is the mindset. You can implement that right away. Like just shift your brain right now. Now the second part, and this is the part that you're gonna really be able to literally, after you watch this video, go do it immediately, 
how you organize your files. This is really important. So I, I could take you into the computer and show you, but I'm just gonna talk to you like this. So here's how I organize my files. I kind of organize my files in stages, but the way I do it right now, I'm actually gonna change, but the way I do it right now is by year. So I'm like, okay, 2024 singles. I had another file called 2023 singles. Then if I was working on a project, like I have an album I've been working on for hella long called Views from the Sunset, VFTS, it has its own folder. I don't like separating things by years anymore because I've got songs that are in the 2024 folder that are not gonna get finished in 2024. Right now it's November 12th. Like they're not gonna get finished by 2024. They're gonna bleed into 2025. And my mind starts to go, oh man, like this song is getting old, blah, blah, blah. Like I start putting all this pressure on myself. Like, oh damn, this song has been so old. But it's like, dude, it's not that big a deal. So I don't wanna do that anymore. From now on, what I'd rather be doing is I would rather just, I would rather just go through and have things separated as songs I love and songs I don't really want to work on that much. Cause I'm going to sit and make beats. I'm like, ah, I might work on this, but I probably won't, but I don't want to delete it. I'm just going to step away from it from right now. I don't want to go have that be in the same folder as like a song I work on and feel great about. So the new organization system I'm going to do is songs I love. All right. So, and, and they, those can transcend years. So I'm gonna double click that and I'm gonna see songs I love. In that folder, that's where I have things separated in stages. So if you're watching this video right now, you probably wanna take notes on this part um, if you're not already taking notes. But what you wanna do is separate things into stages. So here's what I have. First stage is beats. These are like four eight bar loops. These could even be fully arranged beats, but they have no lyrics and no recording to them. So I have beats. Then I've got what's called, this is a really special thing called hook screenshots. A hook screenshot is where I've got a beat and it might not be fully arranged. It might just be like a four bar loop or an eight bar loop. And I've got a chorus already recorded because what I end up doing, like I'll be here at the computer and I'll be like making a beat. I might hear the melody from, and it could be a splice loop. Uh, it could be an arcade loop. I might play something on my keyboard, whatever it is. And I might get inspired like immediately. And I might, like, I might be like, damn, like I don't even need to finish the beat right this second. I could actually literally start recording right now. So what I do is I literally have my microphone right here and I'll just like, okay, cool. I'll start recording with the auto tune and my vocal stack and everything. That's called a hook screenshot, right? So I've got beats, then I've got, so I've got beats, then I've got hook screenshots. Then I've got, needs mixing or mix mixing. And in that stage, the song's fully recorded and it's in the mixing stage, right? I'm not done mixing it, but it's fully written, fully recorded, we're done. And then after that mastering phase, which is these are all the songs that are mixed that might need mastering. Now for me personally, because I mix and master quickly, meaning once I'm done with a mix, I'm gonna master it like immediately. Like, mas like for me, mastering does not take a long time because I spend so much of my attention on the mixing part. So I might just have a folder called mixing slash mastering. Now, <laughs> let, me, let me even zoom in more. I will then double click on the mixing slash mastering folder or the needs mixing folder and each song gets its own folder. So let's say I'm working on a song. I just put one out, but I'll call it building on my own. So if that is in the process of being mixed, where I'm like, okay, I need to mix this song. It's in the mixing and mastering folder. I'll double click that. And then I'll have a folder called building on my own. Then when I double click that, that's got all the building on my own stuff. The Logic Pro set, I use Logic Pro, right? Logic Pro session. Um, Maybe I bounce out the instrumental. Maybe there's some demo recordings. Maybe there's different versions of the mix. So I'm really big on like segmenting. That's kind of the main principle that you can take away from this whole file organization thing is segmenting your folders. This is huge. And then the next part of it too is I personally am addicted to the notes app on my iPhone. Like I love notes. <clears throat> I love notes because 
when I have an MP3 on notes, first of all, I can play it and type the lyrics right there, which is sick. The other thing is what I used to do is I used to send MP3s to myself, like text it to myself on iMessage. The problem is when you click play on iMessage, if you put your phone on like, you click it like where you turn the screen off, the song stops playing, which is super annoying. I've also tried emailing songs to myself with Gmail, but then the problem is I'm limited to like where I get internet. If I'm on an airplane and I'm Wi-Fi mode, or if I'm walking somewhere and I don't have good internet, the song isn't gonna play. So when I have my song in notes app in my iPhone, it's way better because I can go on an airplane with it. I can go anywhere with this song and write and, and, and be good. So I'm addicted to notes. The reason I tell you that is because when I have songs or beats or hook screenshots that are in my notes app, I'm like, okay, these are like the top ones that I'm working on. Like these are the songs that are for sure gonna get finished. So I'll like, I'll have my, my stuff in my computer, but then like my notes app, like these are the ones I'm really working on. And so I've been getting out songs consistently and consistently growing a fan base. And now obviously growing a six figure business out of my music and helping other people with their music. A lot of that has come down to how I organize my songs. And it really comes down to both of the things we talked about today, which is mindset, realizing that like probably 99% of the songs that I start are never gonna go out, but then also having a mindset to wanna get songs finished on a consistent basis. So there's the mindset part. The other thing that you can take away right now is go into your computer and go organize your files, I almost guarantee, I've worked with enough clients and seen how they do it, they're just saving stuff randomly. And I always tell them, you need to organize your fo folders way better. So go organize your folders into those different segments of like beats, stages basically of the song beats, hook screenshot, mixes, masters, and then within those folders, have folders dedicated for each song. The other thing I like to do is for the social media content. So for my song, Building On My Own, right? Once it got finished, I took it out of the mixing and mastering and I put it into the released or song released or 2024 singles. And these are the songs that got released, okay? So I've got the songs I love folder, in there, I've got the different stages and I have a new folder called 2024 singles. I'll go into there and building on my own has its own folder. In the building on my own folder, right? I've got the Logic Pro, I've got all the MP3s, the waves, the mixes, the masters, and I've got the social media content. So for my song building on my own, I did a bunch of videos, like a bunch of micro content, um, like vertical micro content. I put all of those into the building on my own folder in another folder called social media content. So I'm like, I'm just addicted and obsessed to just segmenting things by stages and having things really organized. How annoying is it when you can't find a session or when you can't find something you're working on? You're like, damn, what was that one? I can't find it. It's super annoying. So biggest thing you can take away from today is have, a, have that mindset around finishing your songs as well, organize your folders and organize your files. This way you'll be more organized and you'll be able to get songs done quicker and more efficiently. So I hope this video helped. Um, I, at whatever capacity, I'm happy to serve and support you. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.